Relief when you are outnumbered, overpowered, and they've got you cornered. That's when you realize your last best hope is... Growing up in the early 2000s, one of the games I grew very fond of due to multiple late nights of co-op and multiplayer sessions was Halo Combat Evolved. I grew to love Halo so much that I'd argue it's one of my favorite game series growing up. But due to Microsoft's numerous attempts to butcher the series into obscurity with things like the atrocious Halo TV series or 343's numerous attempts at revitalizing the Halo games, yet failing to hit the mark right away four times in a row, let's just say I've grown a bit jaded with the franchise. And one thing with the Halo franchise that I never quite understood was why Microsoft never took more risks with it by taking the games in a different direction, by ditching the John Halo storyline and switching up the genre a bit. I mean, yeah, there was Halo Wars 1 and 2, which took it into a real-time strategy direction, or Spartan Assault for, you know, the 12 people who got to play that. But ever since Halo Wars, the franchise never quite got the chance to flex its IP a bit and be used for other genres within the gaming landscape. You see, Halo can be more than just a first-person shooter. In fact, ever since I played the original Resident Evils back in the day, I always dreamt of the day where the Halo series leaned into its horror roots, especially when it comes to the Flood. Unfortunately though, since Microsoft doesn't like money or experimenting with their franchises anymore, we have to leave it to the fans to take it into their own hands and make our dreams come true. And thanks to the developer and animator, not PB, they're developing a standalone horror game based in the style of classic Resident Evil titles, and also based on the short story found in the Halo graphic novel of the same name, Breaking Quarantine. Breaking Quarantine combines the art style and story of Halo Combat Evolved with the fixed camera and minimal inventory gameplay style found in the original PS1 horror titles like Resident Evil and Dino Crisis. And it does so incredibly well by actually bringing some newfound sense of tension into the encounters that you can have against an enemy like the Flood. In its current state, the game is in early alpha with only a short section on offer to play so far. But from what's on offer here already, it's a fantastic insight as to what a Halo horror game could be like. And I spent a good four hours straight just playing this demo alone, and I just knew I had to make a video on it. The game has you playing as Sergeant Johnson, right after the encounter that he, Captain Keys, and the rest of their team had with the Flood in the original Halo, and follows pretty closely with its graphic novel counterpart. With a short cinematic right at the start showing Johnson fighting off the Flood as he exits the room, right after he gets out is where we actually start playing this short demo, and where the survival horror truly begins. I'M SO FUCKING SCARED RIGHT NOW! Since the game is taking advantage of the Microsoft game content usage rules, it's able to pull off that classic visual style from the early Xbox days by having actual assets from Halo 1 and combining those visuals with pre-rendered backgrounds taken right from the level that this story comes from. Granted, this could have been done with actual 3D environments from the 343 Guilty Spark level by just using the original map data, but the fact that the dev went into the original map and tweaked it a bit to add some more detail to each area, and making these backgrounds pre-rendered in the first place, makes this game achieve those classic PS1 horror game vibes outstandingly. And since Breaking Quarantine is going for that classic horror feel, the combat is pretty much one-to-one -one with something you'd see from those older horror titles, with us having to pretty much stop and aim to shoot, and thankfully there is a pretty generous auto-aim feature that snaps to nearby enemies and we can reload on command and even aim up and down as well, giving us a bit more of an advantage while shooting. Although you'll still need to line up your shots and be smart about how you approach these hordes of flood, because they could easily corner you and outnumber you if you're not careful. Yo, holy shit, he dead! Plus, it wouldn't be a classic horror title without some sort of inventory system, and this game straight up pulls out the inventory system from the Resident Evil games and places it here in this one. Even having the ability to combine items and examine them a bit closer, even if it is just a video placeholder for now, it's still incredible seeing this amount of detail displayed so far in this project. Now, since the game is pretty early in its development, so far as of the recording of this video, you mainly play up to the point where we ride up the elevator to the surface. And while this is pretty much where the comic ends as well, it would be nice to see if Not PP plans to expand the story and see how Johnson makes it off this ring. 
But even though the game only takes place in this small section, it took me multiple attempts to get here due to the difficulty of the game itself and its incredible replayability. Now, it's not like insane levels of difficulty, but there's already a good tune and balance when it comes to the enemy variety and the ammo supplies given throughout the game. Plus, it might have just been me, but it felt like enemies dropped more ammo or health items with each new playthrough, and it felt like they came just at the right time when I needed to pick me up. But each playthrough does feel a bit different in terms of difficulty due to different enemy placements or even new item drops. But so far, there are only a couple of enemy types in this build that at least I played on, like those tiny flood infection forms, as well as the elite flood forms. But I'm telling you right now though, I've never been more terrified of these little shits until this game. But the developer plans on adding the other enemy types over time, like the human combat forms, but it would be really interesting to see if even more flood types from later Halo games make it in here too. And so far you only get about three weapons in this build to mess around with, starting with the assault rifle, the shotgun, and the magnum. With the shotgun even having a small cutscene play out before we get it, which is almost ripped straight out of the comic panels. But it'll be interesting to see how other weapons from Halo 1 will handle in this different gameplay style, if they're implemented, of course. Just from this short demo alone, though, there's already an incredible amount of detail on display here, and I'm so excited to see how the rest of it plays out and see how far this developer goes with the story. I'd love to see how they handle the swamps outside of the facility and hell, even what's past that. And like I mentioned earlier, if we could see how Johnson escapes the ring, even if it's not canon, I think that would be pretty sick. Oh, This is it, baby. Hold me. Editing Blade here. So, according to a recent update for the project, those human enemies have been added into the game, as well as a few new goodies, like a new credit screen, as well as some in-game content, and a few new rooms. But I'm not going to spoil any of those here in this video. And as for now, the project is on hold for the foreseeable future, according to Not PP in their Discord server. So for now, this playable slice of Halo mixed with Resident Evil is all we have, but savor it for what it is. I hope Not PP the best for, on their upcoming animations and projects, if they're anything like this and also make sure to go subscribe to them because they make some stellar animations including an animation based on this story as well so go check them out and show some love but like i mentioned it's in very early development and almost seems like a proof of concept so far so expect a few bugs here and there like clipping issues shots sometimes not registering correctly or even some overlay issues with the pre-rendered backgrounds and a few shots but besides that the gameplay and art style here are pulled off incredibly well and I can't wait to see what's in store for the future of this title. And I really hope Microsoft plays nice about this one, because it is such a great fan project. Don't you get back up! If you'd like to support the developer and check out the game for yourself, head over to their Discord group, which I'll leave down in the description below, and give this game a shot. Like seriously, from what's available here already, any fan of classic horror games will get a kick out of this one. We'll open a door to scare. I touch the console. Nice job, Kermit. Fuck you! Nice. Any fan of classic horror games or even Halo will get a kick out of this one, and you owe it to yourself to check it out. We need more original Halo content like this. It's such a fresh take on the series while still keeping it grounded within its source material. I'd love to see other stories in the Halo universe adapted into a video game format, because there's so many other stories to tell within the extended universe, and Microsoft's like doing nothing with the franchise, essentially, at least from what we know of. So thank you, not PP, for putting in some incredible work here. I know this is a bit different from the usual mods that I cover, but I thought this game was so damn neat in its concept, especially being a Halo horror title that I had to make a quick video on it and of course share this fantastic work that's put on display here. And if you like this video at all, please drop a like and maybe subscribe. Within the next week or so, we'll be back on track with the GTA mod video since it's been a few uploads since I covered those games, but I think I got something in store that I think a lot of you are going to enjoy, so stay tuned for that one. Plus, I do want to cover some more Halo mods in the future, and I have my eyes set on a couple that I want to cover, but let me know if there's anything interesting you'd want to see. Also, make sure to follow me on socials and all that stuff. I'll leave those linked in the description too, as well as Twitch, because someday I'm going to stream there again. Someday. Anyway, that's all for me this week. I hope you all have a fantastic day, or at least a better one tomorrow, and I'll catch you all later. Blado out.